This is St. George's Island, and the, uh, the ultimate goal was to replace three utility poles, uh, the first one being on the edge of the salt grass or the marshy area that you see in front of you, and the second and third poles being out in the middle of the water in as much as four to six feet of water. Here are the poles coming out. Um, it's a better shot coming up, but, but here's the poles with the uh, crane. And again, I asked the question, how wet do you want to get? You know, obviously there, there, was, there was several inches of water uh, on top of the mats themselves. Cranes at work. And he's working uh, on the new, uh, the, new, the new pad, which is over on the left. And then eventually the, uh, the old poles will come out as well. Some of the challenges we faced was the tidal. Uh, it was about a 12 to, to 18 inches of, of tidal swing throughout the day. Uh, in addition to that, the high currents, the boat traffic, and the biggest thing was from an environmental concern, the minimal impact on the salty grass. And, and, and you know, the environmental concern of, of getting the equipment out to the poles to do the pole replacement. The challenges, like I spoke about, uh, the, the first, of course, was the environmental requirements for salt grass marsh area. Uh, the requirements were pretty specific. We could not exceed five pounds per square inch in any given area. So we immediately went to work on designing the scheme, the, the system, to minimize the impression on that particular area. And the way you do that with these particular mats is the mats are interconnected, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. They're all interconnected, and you simply layer them in a configuration to spread the weight, you know, both wide as well as high. Uh, the, the challenge is the bay depth out towards the end was four to five feet. Uh, the current was 30 to 40 mile an hour and the high tide often prevented work from being performed during the middle of the day. Uh, most of the work was done either at night or in the morning. And then the boat traffic. So the solution was for us to bring in our, our Dura-based mat system. We own about 18,000 of these mats. They weigh a thousand pounds apiece. They're made of uh, high-density polyethylene, and they have an inner core which allows the floatability of the mats themselves. The installation is done uh, with our install teams. There are, there are a number of loaders that you see in front of you, about 18,000 pound loaders, and a, a series of individuals on the ground that, that align the mats that actually interlock. There's a one-foot overlap that actually interlock together by way of a pin system. The advantages of baby mats is the mats link together into a strong integral structure. It's a system itself. And it's, I compare it to a suspension bridge. The fact that they're all pinned together creates, you know, a uniform pressure and a uniform solution to, to suspend the weight itself. Uh, instead of individual mats, a lot of times wood mats, they don't interconnect, or there's some competitors out there that don't have interconnecting mats. And, and the, the, the problem there obviously is without a connection, uh, you know, you have issues uh, in between the mats themselves. Here it's one integral structure that's, that's linked together, uh, both longitudinally as well as uh, uh, depth-wise. You actually uh, uh, link together the, the depth of the mats or the, the, the individual layers of mats going down. There's certainly no lasting damage to ground impression. Uh, the minimal site preparation, we, we come in, we, 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 you know, offload the mats and then we get started. Uh, the, I talked about the interior honeycomb design that creates the buoyancy. Again, they weigh about a thousand pounds a piece, uh, but being that uh, there, there's air inside, it actually creates the buoyancy. Um, this, this particular project was 1,822 mats. We laid it in 11 days uh, by our crews. Uh, we washed the mats after, at the site prior to removing them uh, to avoid any kind of cross-contamination. And it's certainly safer for vehicles. This is not like a wood structure where you have uh, you know, uh, metal objects, whether it be rods or, or poles or stakes or something coming out. Uh, this is all a, a, in a closed system that's all flat uh, with a nice uh, um, raised surface for, for, uh, for safety. And the HTPE is a recyclable material. Here's a, a, a nice side profile. You can see the pins and you can see the overlap, the one foot overlap between mats themselves. And you can picture how this becomes an entire interlocking system.